Hello there, and welcome to Pets Aplenty. Today on the channel, you'll be learning all about the Gordon Setter, a breed that is often known as the Black Avenger of the Highlands. We've gathered all this information to help you make an informed decision in your adoption process. Before we continue, though, we would love for you to subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications so you'll be the first to know when we post a new video. Dog Breed History the Gordon Setter's origins may be traced back to the 1600s. However, by the end of the century, the fourth Duke of Gordon had established his own recognized breed. For some time, the Duke was more concerned with how well his dogs performed than their appearance. Thus, his kennels lodged and worked setters of many colors, including black and white, red and white, and tricolor, known as the Duke of Gordon Setters. People in Scotland and other places in the United Kingdom desired a bird hunting dog that would set or gently lay down when it found prey. Different setter breeds emerged with the Gordon being the heaviest and most suited to Scotland's harsh terrain. Alexander Gordon, the fourth Duke of Gordon, produced what was then known as black and tan setters. These dogs resembled the English setter at first. However, the addition of other breeds such as black and tan collies, bloodhounds, black pointers, and black setters shaped the current Gordon setter. The black and tan shape we know today developed later in the breed's history, most likely as a consequence of the breed's success in the show ring. The breed came to the United States for the first time in 1842. It was initially recognized by the American Kennel Club in 1878. In 1924, the breed's official name was changed from the Black and Tan Setter to the Gordon Castle Setter and then to the Gordon Setter. Appearance Gordons, like other Scottish breeds, range from the small Scottish Terrier to the magnificent Scottish Deerhound, were bred to resist their country's harsh terrain and nasty weather. A typical Gordon Setter has a traditional black and tan coat with rich chestnut or mahogany markings on his sides and bottom of the nose, above the eyes, on the neck, two huge spots on the chest, inside the hind legs, and on the forelegs. He has long hair on his ears, chest, tummy, back, legs legs, and tail. The tail is short, with triangular feathering that gets consistently shorter toward the end of the tail. Gordons are the biggest and heaviest setters, with a huge male standing 27 inches at the shoulder and weighing 80 pounds, and females are 23 to 26 inches tall and weigh 45 to 70 pounds. Temperament the Gordon Setter is friendly with family and well-known acquaintances. Still, it takes some time to warm up to newcomers. Gordon Setters, like other dogs, need early socialization to thrive. Ensure he's exposed to various people, sights, noises, and experiences while still young. Enrolling him in puppy kindergarten is a terrific place to start. The dedicated Gordon Setter is protective of his family, yet apprehensive of strangers, qualities that make him an outstanding guardian. Before adoption, always meet at least one of the parents to confirm that they have pleasant personalities with whom you're comfortable. Meeting the parents' siblings or other relatives is also beneficial in determining what a puppy will be like as he grows up. Puppies with good temperaments are interested and lively, eager to approach and be held by humans. Several variables influence temperament, including inheritance, training, and socialization. Socialization Gordons are tender and affectionate dogs that live to please their owners. They're usually attached to their family and love to be with them, yet they're pretty content to be alone while their family's gone. The breed is naturally brilliant and quick to learn. Gordon pups benefit from early socialization and puppy training programs, which help them develop into well-adjusted, well-mannered companions. Gordons get along well with other dogs and cats if they're reared with them, although on some occasions they may be wary of unknown dogs. Gordons are devoted to and protective of children, but teaching your children how to approach and touch dogs, especially those asleep, is essential. On your part, constantly monitor any interactions between dogs and small children to avoid biting or ear or tail tugging on either party's behalf. Socialization ensures that your Gordon Setter puppy develops into a well-rounded dog. Exercise 
Gordons were developed to be personal hunting dogs and nannies and, as such, they have a high level of endurance. Because the Gordon Setter is a dog with tremendous power, stamina, and endurance, anticipate many hours of daily dog activity, including strolling with some free running, regardless of the weather. Dog sports may give mental as well as physical challenges. Ensure your Gordon is kept on a leash or in a securely gated area. The breed has a strong hunting drive and may reject your recall attempts if it spots something it wants to pursue. Participating in approved dog sports or activities is recommended, especially those that use Gordon Center stamina, scenting, and retrieving abilities. We advise that you keep these exercises half an hour before or half an hour after eating for some health concerns. With enough exercise and patience, the Gordon Center becomes a great companion. Training we all want our puppies to be of excellent behavior, not just with us, but with other pets and humans. For this reason, your dog must be educated to understand entire orders. The order comes, should direct it to come when called, help him recognize and react to his name, and obey the word no. He's polite and ready to please, but like any dog, he'll exploit loose leadership and become dominating, willful, and obstinate if not subjected to harsh, fair, and consistent training. Adolescent Gordon Setters may be quite a problem as adults due to their slow maturation and sensitive disposition. It will take thorough training to instill appropriate behavior and etiquette without squashing their loving, dignified character. The finest training is to give them a job, and the best work they can have is to spend time with their owner, whether they're being taught or having fun. This breed usually responds well to training, mainly when using positive reinforcement techniques. A puppy class may help your dog learn basic instructions. Rushing a Gordon Center results in a confused dog who plays rather than performs. Ideally, training and socialization are meant to begin when your Gordon Center is a puppy. This will assist in reducing its shyness towards strangers. The breed gets along well with other dogs but may see smaller domestic pets as prey. Grooming Grooming your Gordon Setter is an essential practice that should not be overlooked. Brush your dog's coat once or twice weekly to remove loose hair and avoid mats and tangles. Pay close attention to the places with feathering since they tangle quickly. Expect more extensive shedding periods in the spring and autumn when you should increase your brushing frequency. Give your Gordon a bath once a month using a dog-specific shampoo and conditioner and thoroughly rinse. Check for rashes, sores, or symptoms of infection such as redness, soreness, or inflammation of the skin, ears, nose, mouth, eyes, and feet while you groom. These weekly examinations will help you detect health concerns early. There shouldn't be redness or discharge in the eyes. If the inside of your Gordon's ear smells awful, seems red or sensitive, or shakes his head or scratches his ear regularly, he may have an ear infection. To eliminate the chances of ear infections, check your Gordon's ears once a week and clean them with cotton dampened with a veterinarian recommended cleaner. Never insert cotton swabs or anything else into the ear canal as this might cause injury. If your dog's nails don't wear down naturally, trim them once or twice a month. Short, adequately trimmed nails maintain the feet in excellent shape and avoid scratches on your thighs when your Gordon rushes up to welcome you. Handle his paws regularly bearing in mind that dogs' feet are pretty sensitive. You can tell they're too lengthy if you hear them clicking on the floor. Try to make grooming a happy experience full of praise and prizes. You'll set the stage for smooth veterinarian tests and other handling when he's an adult. Diet and Nutrition Gordon Setters are large breed dogs, so in addition to having more enormous appetites, they also benefit from a different mix of nutrients such as minerals and vitamins. It's not suggested to feed the Gordon Setter a diet rich in protein of more than 26% since this might cause health problems. In addition, sodium may be harmful, therefore always avoid foods with salt. A fiber level of at least 4% is recommended for firm stools. Feed high quality 
dry and wet dog food and modest quantities of nutritious ingredients like chicken and salmon, fruits, and cooked fresh vegetables. The quality of the dog food you purchase matters considerably. The better the dog food, the better your dog. Two to three cups of high quality dry food each day split into two meals is the recommended daily quantity. Although the amount of food your adult dog consumes should be determined by size, age, build, metabolism, and activity level. Keep your Gordon in excellent form by weighing his food and feeding him twice daily. Avoid taking your dog out for exercise for half an hour before or after eating as bloating is familiar with this breed. This risk can be lessened by eating smaller, more frequent meals. Health the Gordon Setter is typically a healthy breed. However, they are prone to certain illnesses and ailments such as hip and elbow dysplasia, progressive retinal atrophy, hypothyroidism, and gastric dilatation vulvulus, commonly known as bloating. As a potential owner, it is vital to be aware of these potential issues. Hip dysplasia is a genetic illness in which the thigh bone does not fit securely into the hip joint. Gordons exhibit pain and lameness on one or both back legs. Still, a dog with hip dysplasia may show no indications of discomfort. Elbow dysplasia is an inheritable disorder that is frequent in big breed dogs. Different development rates of the three bones that make up the dog's elbow are hypothesized to produce joint laxity. Progressive retinal atrophy is a degenerative eye illness that leads to blindness due to the loss of photoreceptors in the rear of the eye. Years before the dog displays any indications of blindness, PRA may be detected. Gastric dilatation vulvulus is a potentially fatal ailment affecting huge, deep-chested dogs, particularly if they are given one meal per day, eat quickly, drink significant quantities of water quickly, or run intensely after eating. Cancer is the least leading cause of mortality in all breeds of senior dogs. No one form of the disease is more common in Gordons. Young dogs dying of cancer are infrequent. We hope you found helpful information on the Gordon Center in this video. What are your thoughts on this big guy? Do you own one? Tell us about it in the comments section down below. Remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on post notifications so you'll be the first to know when we post a new pet video. Also, make sure to check out our playlists and click on the video links that pop up at the end of this video. Thank you for watching.